Hello. We're going to pick something found or seen in the Strategic Air Command film, and then I'm going to show you the real deal. That right there is the hemispheric siding station. What it does is it controls the nose gun. In the film, I can't really find the view from the inside looking out, so we'll just go with that. As you can see, the nose gunner is seated in his chair. Let's go look at the real deal. There's the optical head you see sticking out. The genesis or the origin of this device is the traditional sighting stations used in the B-29 Superfortress were presented with a serious problem in the nose of the aircraft. And that problem is the frames prohibited the view of the sighting station from scanning in those areas. Someone wanted to devise a way to be able to see a complete full hemispheric view of the entire aircraft that was not obstructed. And this is it. This is the result. Of course, the optical head sticks out from the front of the aircraft. There's a crystal that can demonstrate the movement. There's a crystal. And whatever image the crystal picks up, that is transferred down through here to here, where there's a second massive crystal that we can actually see on this exposed unit right here. That crystal then transferred the image to the eyepiece. What we've accomplished is the nose gunner with his eye here and his hands moving that crystal in the front of the airplane could see a full hemispheric view of the entire aircraft that was unobstructed, hence the name Hemispheric Sighting Station. If you'll notice on the, B, the nose of the B-36, beside the middle, off to the side, there's a small circle. That's where this one, this plate once bolted to. Let's look at some of the details here. This device was for leveling and centering and harmonizing the gun. Some sort of a device would sit on top of this. These tubes are for dehumidifying the air. Can't think of what that thing's called. Desiccator. My desiccators to this device are not present. So I can't, well, here's a desiccator. What those tubes did was with compressed air, it pushed the wet air through this crystal substance, which dried the air and then returned the dry air back up into the optical head. The optical head is also heated. So if you can see these big coils are for heating. This is the gun camera. These are your cells and generators, which I've described in other videos. Basically, whenever you pointed this at a target, it would read between one and 30, and that represented a position of the nose gun, one, 30. So if you put this to two, the gun would point to two. That's a really elementary way of explaining it, but it is really simple. It's just the things in between that are complex, which I can't get even touch on in this video. Here, a device used to hang off of here that would allow the gunner to rest his non-dominant sighting eye. It was like an eyepiece. It was adjustable to either this side or this side. The way that the gun sights on the B-36 worked the way you told the computer how far away the target was, was you knew the target size wingspan of your target. That's what this is for. And there's a really nice display. It's uh, 
incandescent display that has dots that move that represent the uh, diameter of the, uh, the target's wingspan. And that's how the computer knew how far away it was. There's your data plate. This one's made by, designed by General Electric and made by Eastman Kodak. These were originally designed by Farron Optical out of New York. There's various controls. This is how you lock the azimuth and elevation. Here's your action switch. Whenever you press down, well, it's spring loaded, it should be like that, but whenever you press down, wherever you turn these, the nose turret on the B36 would move. And here's your fire button. These cost the United States taxpayers $265,000 per unit back in the 1950s. Now they're, with the exception of academic value, they're worthless. They weigh about 110 pounds. As you can see in my collection, I have three in various states of condition. I'm given to understand that it was very important for nose gunners to ensure that as soon as they touched the ground and it was practical was to cover up this optical head because this is the most, or was the most expensive part. That's what they use these for. The nose gunner controlled his turret. The settings for the turret, this device here, which is a gunner's control panel setting would be off and of course it was a vacuum tube based system so this would warm up your tubes and after about what five minutes or so then you turn it on to operation each turret had two m24 a1 20 millimeter auto cannon this is the ammunition counter for either gun this is your main fire relay your turret power Spare fuse. Periodically, the navigator on the aircraft would get on the intercom and he would advise all of the gunners at what speed the aircraft was traveling and its altitude and the air temperature, which affected ballistics. So you'd hear that if it was traveling at 350 degrees, you'd set this periodically at 350, 48 degrees or whatnot and then your altitude. That's how the computer knew everything. It knew how far away the target was, how fast you were moving, the aircraft you're in, the aircraft's altitude, and the outside air temperature. This is a fuse for your gun heaters. This is kind of silly. Um, what this did, it would eliminated the ballistics computer from the equation so if you were to turn it off, which would be, it is out of the equation. So you would manually aim the gun and have to, uh, to lead the target manually and uh, whatever the elevation was called. But these things are really hard to, to maneuver. They're very, they're very tight. I feel this one's been very well kept, but still it takes a considerable amount of motion because you've got gears in here that are turning a mess of gears and then that transitions those gears up these rods here. Then through the Selsun generators, then up to here to the optical head. So imagine traveling a, a or tracking a Messerschmitt ME109 traveling at 300 miles an hour. The B36 is traveling 300 miles an hour and it's coming right at you firing machine guns at you. Imagine doing that without the computer at night or in bad weather. When I received this unit around 20 years ago, you could actually look through it and you could see, I would love to be able to demonstrate that, but the glass inside, like all glass in the 1950s for optical equipment, especially that of the military, has, I believe, thorium isotope and it turns the clear glass or crystal in this case, amber colored. It's very, very dark. You can see through it, but I can't demonstrate with this camera. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is.
It's interesting to note that this gun sight changed the development of the B-36 program significantly. You're accustomed to seeing the raised cockpit of the B-36, where originally the XB-36 featured an airline cockpit. It wasn't until later in the development because of experience during World War II that they put the nose to it here and raised this cockpit up. We'll talk about that on another video. I'll see y'all next time.